Well hello everyone, my name is Marlene and welcome back to my channel and today I'm going to be talking to you about all of the books that I read in April. So I guess this month was a pretty good reading month for me. Um, it wasn't my best because I felt a little bit slumpy like through the middle um, and I think um, that is Stephen King's fault in all honesty but let's just get into all of the books that I read. I read one two star book, I read two two and a half star books, I read one three and a half star book, um, five four star books which was amazing and two five star books. So I started this month with kind of a bang because I read I think what was probably the best book that I've read for this year. Um, I gave it five stars and it's a book that I absolutely adored and it's um, King and the Dragonflies by Case and Calendar. This book is about a 12 year old boy named King and his brother has recently passed away and his parents and King are just trying to basically get on with their lives even though it's really not possible with the grief they're dealing with. Um, however, King thinks his brother has not died, he has simply shed his skin and become a dragonfly and lives now down at the bayou. King really wants to talk to his best friend Sandy about this, but um, before his brother died he uh, advised King to break up the friendship with Sandy because he had overheard that Sandy was telling him that he was gay. So he wanted to protect his little brother uh, from the same kind of rumours. But then Sandy goes missing and the town is going crazy and trying to find the boy um, but King finds his friend in a tent in his backyard and he tries to help him and escape his abusive father. So the story is mainly about grief, about racism, family, friendship and also kind of questioning your sexuality at a young age. Trigger warnings for homophobia, racism and mentions of uh, domestic abuse. So like I said I really really adored this book. It was written beautifully. I really liked reading from King's perspective. I think a lot of younger kids um, and a lot of other people too can really relate to this story. I mean I am not a black 12 year old boy living in Louisiana um, but I still could relate to part of the story and um, it was just amazing and great to read about. I thought this was perfect. I gave us five stars and I recommend everyone to read this. I'm definitely going to read more from this author because if all of their books are this brilliant I'm clearly missing out. I believe in May this month uh, another book of theirs is coming out, it's called Felix Ever After and I am planning on reading that in May as well. So the next book that I finished was actually a book for the Owls. I participated in the Owls this month and I barely made it. <laughs> I um, Let's just say I made a lot of use of the last hour of this particular readathon that took up the whole month. <laughs> but uh, yeah, I passed and I did all of my owls. I wanted to become a librarian. I also added charms to that list of prompts that I needed to read because I wanted to work at Flourish and Blots. So uh, I did that and I was very interested in, in uh, an Amegas training as well. So I added, um, what was the class, potions to that as well. So I, all in all, I had seven uh, classes, seven owls, seven prompts that I needed to fulfill. And um, the next book that I finished was one of them. I read Midnight Beauties by Megan Shepherd. I read this for Transfiguration because the prompt of that was to read a book or series with uh, shape-shifting involved. So this is a continuation of uh, Grim Lovelies which I read earlier this year. I was really impressed by the writing and impressed by the world uh, of that book and I was very excited to get into this one as well. I was today years old that I found out that there was going to be a duology. I believe I read somewhere that it was going to be a trilogy or maybe I'm just dumb but um, yeah after the fact, after reading it, I found out that it was the last book. So yeah, I read the last book in this duology apparently. So in this book, again, we follow Anouk 
Anouk is also the main character of the first book. But after the events that occur in the at the end of the last book, Anouk is very determined to become a witch. So we follow her to Germany in order to become a witch, which is very hard for beasties, which is the shape-shifting aspect of this book. Yeah, we follow her to the school in Germany and there she will be attempting to become a witch because she wants power and she needs that power to save her friends. So meanwhile, something is happening in the magical world of London and Anouk needs to team up with her enemy in order to overthrow a coven of powerful witches over there. So I ended up giving this book two stars because it wasn't bad per se, it was a good book, but I was a bit disappointed. It really wasn't what I expected. I don't know what I expected, I do know. Um, I expected the book to continue uh, where it left off uh, in the first book. It kind of does, but instead of just going along with that same adventure and then having the same villain or something, we just embarked on a totally different adventure with a different threat and I wasn't really expecting that and I also wasn't really there for that. Also we spent a lot of time in that school, I don't think it was a school but it was a building where these girls gathered to just study and find out what their cruxes were and those were the things that they needed in order to fulfill the trial by fire and become a witch or they would die. It was just a whole lot of walking around over there and that's just basically all that they did, just walking around and looking through books and finding out what their signature thing was that they could use in the magic if they became a witch. So that was pretty boring to read about. I was all there for the trans character though, I felt that was really well done um, and I actually wanted more of her. And then there was the emphasis on a love triangle that I wasn't really on board with. Um, we've got, on the one hand, we've got this very boring character who spends um, the major part of this book in dog form. So he doesn't have much personality, let's say. And the other person in that love triangle with a nuke was the villain or like a manipulative asshole. So it was basically the love triangle from Shadow and Bone, but Mal being a dog. So, well, yeah, it wasn't bad, uh, but I was disappointed and I wanted more out of it. Uh, that's why I gave it two stars. So the next book that I read was Upright Women Wanted by Sarah Gailey. Um, this is a pretty short book that I just threw into my TBR for last month. Um, it didn't really fit any of the prompts. I just read it for me and outside of the Owls Readathon. It's a pretty short book. I don't really want to tell you much about what's going on in this book because I don't want to give everything away. Um, but this book I think takes place in this western type world in like near future America. So we follow a girl named Esther and Esther has recently witnessed her best friend and lover's death execution basically because um, she had uh, unapproved materials in, in her possession. So yeah, that is not allowed in this world. And Esther escapes her town from her father and an arranged marriage. And she wants to become a librarian. Librarians are people who go from outpost to outpost in this world in order and uh, bring uh, the approved materials people can read. Um, but they also have some ulterior motives. So Esther stows away on a cart of the librarians um, in order to join them <laughs> and um, she gets discovered and she discovers that this entire troop of uh, librarians are queer like her and they embark on an adventure. Trigger warnings for gun violence, violence in general and I mean there is some misuse of uh, preferred pronouns so just so you're aware of that going into this. Like I said, it was a pretty short book. Uh, I thought maybe even a little bit too short. I am normally not a person who would pick up a Western type book. Um, I don't find it all that appealing to read about. I did want this book to be longer because I didn't really get a full picture of this world yet. And in 100 something pages, you don't really get a full picture of uh, well-rounded characters and there's also a love story going on so to do that in so little pages is basically impossible and I felt something was lacking in that 
aspect. I also loved, loved, loved the queer representation, um, but the story just unfortunately didn't really grab my attention and kept my attention where it was supposed to be. Um, and it was a bit meh overall, but um, I kind of liked it for what it was too, so I ended up giving it two and a half stars. The next book that I picked up was also not on my TBR for the owls. Um, <laughs> You see my, my my issue there, don't you? But the next book that I read was In Five Years by Rebecca Searle. We follow Danny and Danny has got her life together. Um, we follow her nailing an interview for a job that she has really envisioned herself to have. And that same night her boyfriend uh, proposes to her. So Danny is right on track with where she wants her life to go. Um, and later that night she falls asleep. Um, but she wakes up five years in the future on the same day. She wakes up in a different bed, a different house, a different ring on her finger and a different man. So after that little flash forward into the future, her vision, she wakes up again back in 2020 and she is just a little bit shook. She just continues on with her life and we meet her again four and a half years later and she actually meets the man that she saw in her vision. Trigger warnings for cancer and a character death. So I started this book thinking that it was going to be a light-hearted contemporary. Boy, was I wrong. A romance definitely is not the focal point of this story. Um, I'd say it was more about friendship and how destiny and fate all work out in the end and how life doesn't always go as planned. I think those were the main themes of this story. I definitely cried. Yeah, this book made me feel things. Um, however, I do think that this book is marketed wrong because it says, brimming with joy and heartbreak in five years is an unforgettable love story that reminds us of the power of loyalty, friendship, and the unpredictable nature of destiny. It is not a love story. So the unforgettable love story part is definitely not true. Uh, the rest of it is, however. I'm not saying it's the love story is kind of part of the plot twist, I guess, that's going on in this book, but it definitely had an impact on what I wanted this book to be, on my expectations and what I knew going into it and what I expected from it. So for what it was, if it was marketed not as like a contemporary romance thingy, or that is what I thought it was going to be, I would have given this book um, like three stars. But if I actually see and read this book for what it is, I might have given it four stars. But yeah, I it, it, the expectations and reality did really mash up and it's not really the writer's fault and it's not my fault, or well, maybe it is a bit. But um, yeah, it's mostly I think the marketing and that love story part because that's not really it, is it? So I just put my rating down in the middle and I gave this book three and a half stars. Okay, so the next book that I read was Queen of Air and Darkness by Cassandra Clare. I really find it hard to talk about this book because it, it's been a little while since I've read it. Um, and also because it was a lot. It's a thick, thick book. There are so many things going on in this. I don't even remember half of what happened in this book. So yeah, I'm not going to get too much into what it's about because it's the third book in the series in like this giant shadow hunter verse so i'm not going, going to get into that and basically spoil everything so all i can say is that i was all about most of this book i liked everything except a lot of emma and julian's storylines um which are the main characters but first of all um as far as shadow hunter books go i really like the infernal devices so the continuation like the chain of gold book that has uh, recently come out uh, is very much more interesting to me than uh, this second continuation of like the present day was to me. In the end, the Black Thorns were really interesting to read about. Um, I loved them all, although I did not really feel as passionately about Julian for some reason as the series went on. I liked him as a character in Lady Midnight, um, as I did Emma, but uh, I think the second that they gravitated towards a relationship with each other, I was just rooting for them less and less as people. I think that they were more of a couple instead of just two great personalities and great characters. So I loved all of the other characters. I loved Drusilla. I loved seeing how Christina 
Kieran and Mark's relationship developed. I love Ty's character development and his relationship with Kit was just so adorable and gorgeous and precious. Some other characters that we've come to know had their happy endings finally as well. But then we got this weird ass epilogue and I was like, what do I need to do with this? But also like, here we go again. I really like this book. The writing of Cassandra Clare keeps getting better and better. And also because she weaves so many aspects together into this one story, which is insane to think about how she does that. There is so much setup in this book, in the series in general, for another series. I don't know yet if I find that masterful or just simply really annoying because I have to wait for it. Um, so there's one more thing that I didn't really like about this book. I think it has more to do with the structure of YA fantasy series in general, but especially in the Shadowhunter verse, there's almost always some kind of final miraculous act in which the good guys provide the sucker punch to the bad guy and the good guys win. So we've seen it in the third and the sixth book of the Mortal Instruments series, and we've seen it in the last book of the Infernal Devices, and it was in this book as well. But I couldn't really get on board with this one as much as I did with the others in the other series, because the reason behind this miraculous happening or miraculous occurrence wasn't that great. Especially if you compare what happened in the other series, where Clary and Jace were special in their way, um, because it gets kind of explained beforehand. And also in the Infernal Devices, we have information about what Tessa is that ends up helping her with what happens in the last book. Especially that one in the Infernal Devices, that last one is my favorite because we already know from the very beginning that is a possibility, we just didn't think about it. And it came as a surprise, but it's very logical that something happens in the last book. All of these things make sense, but the ending of this story, of this final battle was just trying to wrap up Julian and Emma's storyline in a neat little bow and I was really a great fan of that. Uh, I still gave this book four stars because I loved everything else and I love the craft that goes into creating these stories and there are also some things that are being set up for different series that I'm really excited about. I believe like the, the series that I was talking about is going to be about Ty and Kit but we're going to have to wait for that series another seven years or something. Someday it'll be there to read for us. So the next book that I finished, I think, because I picked this book up as my first book for this month. However, <laughs> it was this thing and it took me a while to get through it. So this big ass book is an anthology by Stephen King. It's called Nightmares and Dreamscapes and it is full of horror and thriller stories by um, Stephen King. So I did read this book for the owls, I read it for arithmancy and that prompt was to read a book out of your comfort zone uh, and that's why I picked up like a horror novel or like collection. I read a lot of different genres um, but sci-fi and horror are genres that I do read but I tend to pick up less or not as quickly as I would pick up like a romance or another fantasy novel. So I thought I'd just pick up a book from like the most popular horror author I think in the world. So yeah, I discovered that I'm not really a great Stephen King fan. <laughs> um, I don't really vibe with his writing. Besides a lot of weird descriptions for people um, especially where women are concerned, where women are either ugly or just gorgeous and very sexualized, uh, or where everything that is described by, uh, on a woman is related to one of their boobs or their vagina. Uh, inanimate objects get compared to uh, women's body parts as well. Uh, but besides that, I still really couldn't get into the way he writes. It just doesn't really read easy for me. It's just not for me. I will probably pick up some other Stephen King's, like most of his, um, a couple of his popular works, just to see what that's all about. And um, the books that are currently still on my shelves by him. But I feel like I'm not going to go out of my way to pick up another Stephen King book again. So my favorite stories from this collection were Suffer the Little Children, Sneakers and The House on Maple Street. So the next book that I read, I read for Charms for the Owls 
and that was uh, the prompt to read a book with a white cover. I read The Dream Thieves by Maggie Stiefvater. I decided to continue with The Raven Cycle this month and this is the second book in the series and I really liked it. So we follow the gang that we follow in the first book again but this time after the ley lines have awoken. Yeah so more magic and more weird things happening. Mainly we follow Ronan and we get a little bit of an insight into his dreams and reality and his dreams are going to be overlapping in this book. And we also find out that there are still a bunch of other people very interested in what magic and strangeness is happening in uh, Caveswater. I think Ronan is one of my favourite Raven Boys. I really enjoyed reading uh, this book that's mainly about him and his character arc. I'm also very there for uh, the Adam Ronan ship because I totally see that happening and I ended up giving this book four stars because I just enjoyed it and Maggie Steve Butter's writing is just amazing. Need I say more? So the next book that I picked up I um, also read for the Owls. I read this for my potions class and I needed to read a book for that that was under 150 pages. So I picked up The Telltale Heart by Edgar Allan Poe. This is a book that has been on my TBR forever. I have read two other short stories by Edgar Allan Poe before and I really really enjoyed them. I guess this one is my favourite now because this was amazing. This was the other book or like story I gave five stars. I'm not going to tell you what it's about because it's extremely short and I would give, give too much away. But it's just so immersive and descriptive but without giving too much away, which is really hard to do. It's just very creepy and we see how our narrator is slowly spiralling into insanity, basically. And he's just trying to convince you about how sane he actually is, which actually has the opposite effect. So I listened to this on audio. Uh, I listened to the audiobook that was narrated by uh, Sir Christopher Lee. And I would highly recommend because he did an amazing job. Um, so yeah, I get ended, just ended up giving this five stars because it was just amazing. And I am definitely going to be reading more of Poe's work. Then I picked up And Then There Were None by Agatha Christie. I um, picked this up for the prompt of Defense Against the Dark Arts. I uh, had to read a book that was set at the coast or at sea. And I picked this one up because it was set on an island. This is a classic mystery novel by Miss Agatha Christie. It is set on a private island and 10 different people are invited by some unknown millionaire to come to the island and spend a weekend on it. I think because there's a new resort or I don't know what the excuse is. I think it's different for each and every person but um, these people are like invited and like lured onto this private island and they all seem very different but there's one thing that they all have in common and that is something that happened in their past that they'd rather keep secret. And then this big murder mystery plot ensues uh, surrounding uh, a nursery rhyme. So I liked this a lot. This was so ridiculous but also so well done. It was really smart. About halfway through I kind of guessed uh, who was behind all this. Yeah I just purely based that on guesswork <laughs> but uh, something happens in the story and th th that made my guess uh, impossible so <laughs> I was just really confused um, but then I ended up being right in the end but it's just so wild um, and it's really immersive it's really spooky the only thing that I was really um, that I thought was really funny was the way how sober and how dry these people are uh, while there are people dying around them like I would panic so much more than they would ever do and these people were just very normal and sober and Still believing that they would escape this island unscathed. <laughs> that was just almost laughable and um, but yeah I enjoyed this a, a whole lot and I gave this book four stars. And so the next book that I picked up was Harry Potter and the Goblet of Fire. I read this book for an owl's prompt um, as you do. Um, I thought it was very fitting because the prompt of History of Magic which I read this for was to read a book uh, about witches and wizards. So I thought that this would perfect with my uh, reread of Harry Potter this year. So April was month four and this is book four of my Harry Potter reread. And um, I don't really have a lot to say about this because 
I think it's almost basic knowledge what happens in these books. I didn't really enjoy this book as much as I did the previous one, uh, mainly because of the villainous monologue at the end, or monologues, because I think there were two of them. This book is the one in the series where shit just got real, um, they get serious AF really fast because we've got our first character death and Voldy is um, really back on his way up. Yeah, I gave this four stars and yeah, I'm just really excited to continue once again with uh, my Harry Potter reread. I might pick up the fifth book this month, I might skip a month in my reread, um, I don't know, we'll see. In the last book that I read this month, I literally finished half past 11 at night i had i had like 20 minutes i had 20 minutes left of this month it was tash hart's tolstoy by katherine ormsby um and i read this book for the prompt of uh, ancient ruins uh, which was to read a book with hearts on the cover or heart in the title this book has both this book is a book that i have been planning on reading ever since it came out and ever since I heard about it. It's a contemporary novel about Tash and she loves Tolstoy. And the title speaks words, doesn't it? No, but Tash is actually in love with uh, classic writing and especially uh, the works of uh, Leo Tolstoy. And she's pursuing her passion all by talking about these books online and also creating a web series together with her friends. Uh, and adapting one of Tolstoy's works because they are adapting um, Anna Karenina as a contemporary web series, which is genius. This story is about this web series getting a little bit more attention that they are used to uh, online and having to deal with uh, haters and more attention and all that. This is also uh, about Tash navigating her sexuality because she thinks she's asexual. She has recently been chatting with a boy that she is starting to like online who is also a vlogger but they haven't yet met in real life and it also deals with friendship and family and there are trigger warnings for cancer. So I really like this book. I think that the things that it tackled were handled very well. I enjoyed reading about all of these people. Um, however, I do think there was something more necessary for me to connect to these characters. So I think there was something lacking there. I don't particularly know what. I mixed up some people in the beginning and I don't really know what Tash's sister Claudie was uh, her purpose was in the book but I liked her supportive parents and I really liked the friendship that was in this um, and it was just very cute and that's why I gave it four stars. So those were all of the books that I read in the month of April. In May I will be reading among others Surrender to the Highlander by Lindsay Sands, Becoming the Dark Prince by Kerry Maniscalco, The Bride Test by Helen Huang, Ghosts of the Shadow Market by Cassandra Clare, and I think a bunch of others. I want to continue the Raven Cycle, so I'm going to be reading Blue Lily, Lily Blue by Maggie Stiefvater. And I also will be planning on reading Song Below Water, which is an arc that I received through NetGalley. Let me know what you guys read down in the comments, like this video, subscribe, I don't know. Um, and I'll see you guys in my next video. Thank you so much for watching. Bye!